All right, everybody, we want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is October 4th, 2023, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. This is the Israel Watch, which we do every week. And it's always exciting, always informative, and always anoint anointed. And uh, this week is no exception, where we have uh, Josie Silver, leading for this hour. So Josie, I'm just going to pray a blessing over you and then we'll turn it over to you. Father, I just thank you for Josie, for her husband, David, for her ministry there in Israel. I just, we just bless you for your faithfulness, your perseverance, your passion, and your relentless spirit over that nation and uh, over your people. And we just say, um, that God's favor is surrounding you as with a shield. We just declare that every day you and your husband are growing in favor with God and with man. We are asking the Lord for you for great wisdom and revelation that you might know him better for renewed strength every day and uh, that no weapon formed against you or your husband or your family will prosper. And that means divine health, that means that your your uh, possessions are protected. That means that uh, the Lord will always give you more than enough provision. And it also means that um, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so we just say thank you, Lord, for Josie. And um, we turn it over to you now, Josie, in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Fred. Receive the blessings. They're powerful, so I receive every one of them. And shalom, everybody. Thank you for coming on. I want to thank you first for your steadfastness and your faithfulness to come on these global watches. And I know that there's quite a few of them. And of course, not just with Israel, but with many different nations. And so many of you, it's so uh, special to get to know and see all the phases that regularly and uh, so I really just did want to start off today with, uh, I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of our congregation, our, our prayer watchers um, here on the mountain, and, and the body of Messiah, that we are so grateful to all of you in the nations that, as I said, are steadfast and faithful to come on these watches and pray with us. And I think it was actually you, Debbie, that prayed yesterday at the Tuesday watch. You prayed for us to be guarded and protected and to be able to stand as we fight and battle. And then I turned it back around to you and I said to Debbie, and it's true, and this relates to all of, all of you, you're in this battle with us. You're in Jacob's troubles with us. So that means that, you know, the attack, is really there for any of us. So we stand with one another. And as we do that, of course, we try to close the gaps in the wall. So there's nothing for the enemy, not even a little tiny crack of a millimeter to come through. And um, But of course, it's a battle, as we know. But anyway, grateful and thankful for you to also be remaining steadfast and faithful. And... Uh, I will do an introduction, but I think to start off with, because Karen can't be with us today, she's quite exhausted. She's really been pouring herself out uh, with a lot of uh, watches and a lot of visitors and people coming. She's doing watches in the sanctuary as well. So um, we've released her today to rest and revive herself. So uh, I sent a, a clip, a YouTube clip to Shirley. And uh, it was just one that I love. I've um, listened to it quite a bit, but it's a blessing by Misha Getz and Marty Getz's daughter. And it's called Our God Reigns, which we know indeed he does no matter what. So let's play it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Josie, is that, was that the Sea of Galilee behind Joshua yeah, Aaron? Yeah, it was. Uh -huh. wow. Her part, I think, was filmed in the States somewhere, maybe Canada, I'm not sure. And the part of Joshua was definitely the, the Gileal, the Canaret, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I love the first part where you see the smoke coming, get what we could imagine as an altar. 
anyway, I hope everybody was blessed by that. Uh, uh, unbelievably, I, I just, I, I saw what God is doing in Israel and with, with these kind of gatherings on the Zoom, we're not the only ones doing it, believe me. But I saw this company of priests arising out of Israel. Hmm. And that we, uh, as the nations, are really privileged to lock shields with them in this hour. And it's sort of like the separation of the wheat and the tares mm -hmm. that's happening. And that sound is, is, is unbelievably beautiful coming out of Israel. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I can see that. You're moved by the heart of God. Well, um, I'm good at blurting things. <laughs> but <clears throat> when we were in Norway dealing with the Oslo Accords at the end, I really, uh, the, uh, the same kind of uh, wind that came in, over us in Israel came in over that, over the meeting. I felt it. At least I felt it. And... <clears throat> I heard the Lord say, call forth the Elijah task. <laughs> and I realized that since Oslo and the <laughs> USA summit, <clears throat> there's been a release of the watchmen sewing a tapestry of God's covenant across the nations. Uh -huh. And, um, as the Nordic warriors, they call them, are released. I hope that's not too far out language for you, but there was a definite shift in, in Norway. The, the, we found out the next day that the meeting between Netanyahu and the Saudi prince was canceled. Last mm -hmm. week, I heard that the Norwegian government has shifted from left into a conservative stream this last week. That, um, now, that's, that's a breakthrough. And now some of them are going down into Egypt. And I, I wrote them yesterday. Zechariah 14 talks about um, <clears throat> the, the songs being released and uh, the spirit uh, of Elijah coming to restore and the rain coming upon the land when, God, when they honor the Feast of Tabernacles and the rain will, and the drought will end. Egypt has been in deep drought. Mm -hmm. So... All of this is, I, I feel like an Elijah task, and I'm, I'm just blubber, blurring, blurring it out now, but you're going to be hearing more about this. Is this real? It's breaking through. Covenant of alignments are coming into place as a result, and I think in it is a preparation for what's coming. Yeah, I think I, we could all agree with that. And when you were talking, I think another way to say how God is... Uh, refining the remnant, um, sorting it out. There is another word, sifting, maybe. I don't know. He's um, sheep and goats, sheep and yep. goats, and nations for sure. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if that's about the body because I wouldn't want to call people goats. They're not. But do you know what I'm saying? There are the ones that, uh, you know, it's a remnant. He's bringing in a remnant. And also, as you were talking, uh, Sue, I kind of saw a picture of God like a, um, not a chessboard, but like a um, ranks of armies on a big square. And they were all in like, there was dozens of squares of people, like say 20 people in each square. And it was big. And he was plucking from one group and putting it in another group, say over there, and then taking from another and putting there. And the words I got, were, and it was like the army of God, and it was like he was saying, I'm realigning and repositioning everybody so that they are in their right place for what I'm about to do. Um, unusual picture, <laughs> but it, uh, it like an army it was like a big a great big asphalt square with nothing else but blocks of people that's blocks of people and so many in a block they were all the same they were very definite 
And I'm taking one from here and putting it here. I'm just realigning, repositioning governments and nations and leaders and the people in my body ready for my next move and what is about to come. Because what, I suppose what you just, it would be, yeah. What, what you just described is the tapestry uh -huh, of covenant. Yeah. Could be, yeah, yeah, that fits. So, Ken, Abba, we want to thank you our Father in heaven, God Almighty, as we just heard, sung and proclaimed in America and, and, and in Israel at the same time, Abba, that you are God Almighty, El Gibor in Hebrew. You are the hero, the champion, the one who wins and gives the victory. And we thank you for what you're doing, that you are in your sovereignty, realigning and repositioning each and every one of us and peoples, and nations, and governments, even if they don't know you, you're doing it for your plans and purposes for each and every nation, but ultimately for what you want to do with your nation, Israel, in these coming days. So Abba, we, we thank you for what you're doing, and we want to move with you. Continue to give us ears to hear, and eyes to see, and a heart to beat with yours, that we can know in the hour what to do, what not to do, and what to pray. B'shem Yeshua. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, okay, this is an Israel watch, so we're going to be focusing on Israel. Um, there's many things to pray for, as there always are. The country, of course, is still uh, in a pathetic state, massive unforgiveness and bitterness like I've never seen before in my life. And usually, you know, what my experience with the Israeli people here, uh, <laughs> they can get very angry and very stressed and you can fight, and but they very quickly can repent. And all of a sudden, we're friends again and we're smacking our backs hitting one another's backs, and it's all okay, it's all good. I've seen this many times, but not so much in the last six months. There's such resentment, resentfulness, and it's bitterness and unforgiveness, like virulent bitterness, not just your regular bitterness, um, because of everything that's going on. So it's almost like a wrestling match. <laughs> It's like there's just a constant wrestling going on and on. Everybody's restless and everybody's wrestling with one another and everybody wants to win. So, of course, when we think about a wrestling match, we think of Jacob, don't we? And uh, so maybe that could be a point of prayer. Uh, also, of course, in Sukkot, we have a number of outreaches that are... Uh, evangelism outreaches and I think actually I may have read from Ariel on one of the WhatsApp groups that I think I read they were trying to shut them down but I didn't hear anything um, after that so I'm not sure what happened. Debbie did, are you sat, you know can you tell us? Uh, we were we stayed behind in praying and um, they, I guess they came in one of their big vans with lights flashing and loud speakers and um, to over, override their, their talking to people, they came to the gate of Beit Yedidia and they were photographing, they were taking pictures of people that were coming in and people that were going out. And um, that went on, that went on till after nine. Uh, so when they were coming back, some of them started interacting and trying to have conversation with them. So I, I guess someone got ticketed from um, the group and they said uh, they ticketed them for uh, uh, blocking the sidewalk. And they said we weren't blocking the sidewalk, but, but they continued. Uh, I think there's some good things that came out of it. We were hearing some of it today while they were eating lunch, but I didn't hear all of it. So. It was in Hebrew. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the, the enemy, that. the enemy's trying to silence, but it's not working. Definitely. Okay, so I'm glad that she knew that, and you could come and thanks, Debbie, 
but nonetheless, you know, not nothing's going to stop um, our evangelism. Uh, you know, the persecution, we have to expect more of it. It already started months ago, and we know that it's just the beginnings. Uh, and not just for us, for, for all believers, I believe, in all nations. But anyway, that is something else that we can pray for today. Uh, you mentioned the rain, so, and I was thinking about the scripture and about the Elijah task. And I was thinking about the scripture in 1 Kings um, of Elijah, where I think it says um, that there will be no rain and no dew on the mountain, um, but only at my word, mm -hmm. um, God said wow. to, at, it's at his word. Now we know the rain did come and we do have rain here in Israel, but if we're gonna be talking about the rain of the Holy Spirit, then, yeah, we've seen drops of it, but not the outpouring that we want to see and that God does want to send on this nation. So he said at his word. So I suppose we have to pray his word. There's a lot of promises in this book that speaks about the, the Lord promising to pour out the rain on this nation. So maybe someone may would may like to pray pray at least one or two of those scriptures and we remind the Lord because he does want us to come and bring his word back to him so he can then send it back to us with an answer. Uh, yeah, so what else is there that we can pray for today? Well, you know, the revelation, there's, since the first of the Moadim, the uh, Yom HaTrua, and then Yom Kippur, and now Sukkot, this is still a time to pray ultimately for Israel's salvation, which is my favorite thing to do <laughs> out of everything. I like praying for the salvation of our people. And it's not easy, not easy talking to them because the veil is super thick, mega thick, but God can remove it. It's the word going out there and then leaving it with God to watch over it, to perform it. And I do actually have a, a, a quite a amazing testimony. I may share it later that with my neighbor actually, and I believe it was completely divine and orchestrated by God. But it was an example of, I don't wanna take up too much time sharing that because I wanna spend time in intercession, uh, but it really was an example of how God can use, divinely use each and every one of us if we just have the boldness to actually go and do it because there's always this sense of fear or rejection or slander, all of those things that you that the enemy tells you, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Uh, and even, even somebody very close to me said, oh, be careful with that. And and I did everything God told me, and it was it was amazing. Even I was blown away. So I think you know we need a lot of us in here. We need boldness to break through that barrier. Who cares anymore? It's not a time to remain silent. This is people's eternity at stake, and God said, "I've put eternity in the heart of all man," and it sits even. In the atheist. Now, I will say this, and maybe we can kick it off with praying for the salvation of our people and awakening of their dormant, sleepy Joe spirits and souls and minds and everything. Because during the Moedim, there is some, there is some part of an awakening, or not an awakening, an awareness that happens with our people. I was listening, I think it might have been on Yom Kippur, I was listening to uh, one for, some One for Israel teachings and, and kind of they just kept popping up and I, I saw this one and I went into it and it was uh, a teaching by Seth Pastel. He's a great, he's a really amazing teacher. And, uh, and he said this, he said, I was with an atheist one day, he was obviously ministering to him, he said, I was with an atheist one day and they said, I asked this man um, about God. And this atheist said to him, 
oh, but I don't believe in God, I'm an atheist. And he said, what about on Yom Kippur? Uh, and he said, oh, on Yom Kippur, he said, I'm afraid of God. The atheist said, I'm afraid of God. Now that is pretty amazing when he doesn't believe in a God and yet on Yom Kippur, there's this awareness in every Jewish person, whether they're atheist to ultra-Orthodox and every denomination in between, and, and I do, I see it. There is, and it came out in this visit with my neighbor. Uh, there is this awareness that comes to the forefront or their consciousness, their cognizant. It's Yom Kippur, sin, forgiveness, synagogue, tradition. And these are the times when God can really begin to, 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 to come into those little tiny, tiny weenie, like keyhole crack that's there. So we're still in this time of the Moedim and we've passed Yom Kippur, yes, but people are still aware that this is part of this whole full feast time. We're in a time of, of happiness and, and joy and a lot of food. And Sukkot, we sit in our Sukkot and do that, eat a lot of food. But people are still aware of this, what this time represents and this is the time of the pouring out of the rain. So Abba, we want to thank you for your Moedim. Lord, we want to thank you that you gave them to us to remember who you are and teach them to our children so that they will know who you are and what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. We thank you that they're eternal. We thank you that they're biblical and they're holy. Hallelujah. We thank you for your Shabbat. Lord, we thank you for everything that comes from you. We thank you even for your language that is so rich and has such a beauty. Hallelujah. And Abba, we want to bring our people before you. Between the porch and the altar, we want to pray for holy visitations. We want to pray for a greater awareness, Lord, in the, in the, in the mind and the intellect, that you would surpass the intellectualism and the professionalism and the hardness of the heart. Lord, you will come, even in this time of joy. Father, come and you'll enter in, you'll reveal, you'll unveil. You'll give a revelation, a visitation, an appearing, something up that would, would draw our people towards you. But we pray these things because we want to see your return, the return of your Messiah. And we know that we want a lot of your people to be able to say, Baruch Abab Hashem Adonai, to invite you back because you said you're not returning until you hear your people saying, Baruch Abab Hashem Adonai. So today we say that with those who can and for those that can't prophetically, Baruch Abba Hashem Adonai, but come, we pray like the rain. You said you would come to us like the rain in Hosea. Lord, you said that you would tear us, but you would heal us, you would bind us, you would put us back together again that we might know you. And that know you is that, that word for intimacy, knowing you intimately. Lord, we prophesy our people to know you intimately. Lord, in this land, we thank you that you're moving in our midst, Lord God. Even when we don't see it, we know that you are unstopping deaf and ears. As truth goes forth, let it find its way to their hearts and their minds and their spirits. Let them not forget what they hear or what they see. Hashem Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Yes, uh, just thinking what you said, there's a thick veil over Israel. But Lord Jesus, Messiah, we thank you that you have rend the veil. Your blood was poured upon the altar in the heavens, O oh God, on behalf of the Jewish people. And we just pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would reveal yourself to them, God, that you'd break down the walls of unbelief. God, draw our people unto you, Lord, in these days. We pray in Yeshua's holy name. Thank you, Michael. Just go ahead, uh, Dahlia. This is one we know so well, Joel, um, uh, chapter 2. 23, be glad people of Zion, rejoice in Adonai your God, for he has given you the right amount of rain in the fall, 
He makes the rain come down for you, the fall and spring rains. This is what he does first. Then the floors will be full of grain and the vats overflow with wine and olive oil. I will restore to you the years the locusts ate, the grasshoppers, shearworms, and cutterworms, my great army that I sent against you. You will eat until you're satisfied and will praise the name of Adonai, your God, who has done with you such wonders. Then my people will never again be shamed. You will know that I am with Israel, that I am Adonai, your God, and that there is no other. Then my people will never again be shamed. After this, I will pour out my spirit on all humanity. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your mm -hmm. old men will dream dreams. Your young men see visions. And also on male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out out my spirit i will show wonders in the sky and on earth blood fire and columns of smoke the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and terrible day of adonai oh lord we do pray oh lord in this season of rain lord that there will be many many that will have visions of you yeshua we're praying for visions of your love lord to come in the night, Lord, to come to, to your people, Lord, your sons and your daughters, Lord, to set them free, and that they'll understand what this season of dwelling, dwelling with you means. Thank you, Yeshua. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Go ahead, Bev. I wanted to follow up on something you said, Josie. Um, and that about when you were sharing with your neighbor, you know, that this is the time not to be silent. And frequently I pray for boldness, particularly of those of you in the land. Um, and what came to my mind as you were speaking was something that Jesus said in Matthew 10. Um, he's preparing his disciples because he says, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. And he goes on that you're going to be brought before governors and they will deliver you up. Don't worry what you're going to speak. Um, and there are several verses, but down to verse 23, when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the son of man comes. And I think this is an incredible time we're in because up until now, that verse couldn't even have been a thought for us until the nation came into being. And for the first time, this gospel is going out in Israel. It's been going out. You all have been in the land for a long time now. And, um, and it, the going forth of the gospel is increasing, particularly through the social media. But I pray so often for uh, these young men, Ariel, Eliel, all those who go with them on the streets and all those who remain behind praying for them because we're seeing now where I don't remember a time where somebody actually tried to give them a ticket for, you know, we're, we're really trying to shut them down. But this is going to increase. So I just want to pray for them. And for all of you in the land that have these opportunities, and even the Apostle Paul requested the prayer, pray for boldness for me. I mean, we think of him as being bold. And he was beat near to death, going from city to city, sharing the good news of Yeshua. But even he prayed, pray for boldness. And so this is what I want to, I want to just uh, tag on to your thought about this. So, Father, I just I thank you. We are living in such an incredible day. We, years ago, we talked about days like this, but now we see them. And you, like Josie said, you know each one of those who are yours. We are in your hand. And we know that we are in the places where you have placed us at this moment in time. But we also know that you're gathering us together in these networks from around the world. And so we join our hearts together right now 
and pray for boldness for your servants in the land, for Ariel and Eliel and the teams that go out on the streets of Haifa to share the good news of Yeshua. And we heard the report of Carolyn who, who talked to several people who were open to hearing. And Father, we pray for protection over them. And we pray that the when the word goes forth, we pray that you will send that word forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is why you baptize them on Shavuot, that mm -hmm. they would be witnesses and that they would go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I uphold these who are so faithful. We pray boldness for them. We pray protection over their families. So many of their families have had illnesses and assaults, and they persevere and they continue. They are such, I hold them in such esteem. They encourage my own heart. And I even pray for the time of sharing Josie had with her neighbor. These are seeds. Father, water them. Water them by your spirit. And we want to see reaping. And Yeshua even said to the disciples that they were being sent out and they were reaping where they had not sown. And for decades and millennia prior, the prophets spoke and were persecuted and they were not listened to. They were chained and put in prison, but they persevered and spoke the word of God. Give us that same fire in our hearts and bring forth divine appointments. Bring forth more and release your word. The word of God is not changed. They may take it, they may put in prison, but the word of God is not chained. And so we ask, Father, as uh, we heard the scriptures about pouring out rain, we ask, pour out your spirit of Amen. boldness and power in the sending forth of the good news of the Messiah, the King of Israel, that he be made known. And we pray, I'll open the hearts and eyes of your people. Now, would you open their hearts with a great hunger and a desire to seek your face? We pray this in the mighty, victorious name that is above every name, in our Messiah and King. Father, hear our prayer. Make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Make it a praise in the earth. Let your word go forth in Zion, throughout Zion, and may it be in our day that you come before all the cities of Israel. May we see this for the coming of the Son of Man. You promised, you said this, and we're now here in it, in our day. We mm -hmm. want to see, we want to see your people come, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Mm -hmm. Come, O Israel, hear, O Israel. Hear the good news of your Messiah and King. He is wonderful and glorious, and he loves you. Amen. Amen. Great. Thank you. So we've got three more people with their hands raised, Elaine, Blair, and Debbie. Let's, um, let's stop after Debbie. And uh, if you guys could be fairly brief please, so that we can, we don't let the time get away from us so we can get back to Josie for some final comments. So go ahead, Elaine, we'll start with you. <clears throat> um, I just want to read Jeremiah 2, verse 13. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Um, and I just want to pray for the Jewish people that they um, they would be thirsty for the living water. Lord, you speak in Zechariah about a day when there will be living water flowing, Lord. Lord, this this is that day, Lord. This is that day when the living water is beginning to flow in your land, on your people. And Lord, I, um, I know in, in John, uh, 
chapter 4, verse 10, when you speak about your people asking for the living water, that they may never thirst again. Lord, you are that living water, Jesus. You proclaimed on the last day of this feast, all those years ago, Lord, that you are the living water. And we, we need to ask for that living water. So, Lord, I ask for mercy on your people, Israel. They have sinned by turning to their own ways and re rejecting you, the spirit, the living water of God. So, Lord, I pray according to your word in Revelations chapter 7, verse 17, that you be their shepherd, that will lead them to springs of living water. And Lord, we ask on their behalf that you make your people thirsty. Make them thirst for this living water. Help them, Lord, to not search out their own water, but to search for you, the fountain of living water. Lord, let this living water flow on your people, in your people's hearts, Lord. Let them thirst. Lord, you said on the cross, I thirst, and I pray for that same thirst to come upon your people, Lord, that, that they will thirst for God's will, God's plan, God's living water, for the Holy Spirit, that is the only water that will ever satisfy. So, Lord, we just pray that this thirst will come upon your people. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elaine. Uh, go ahead, Blair. Okay. I put it in the uh, the chat about the testimony that occurred in Israel. Um, I'm in California uh, after three years of unprecedented drought. Okay, it's a testimony. And 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 Josie, as 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 you've seen just that that little bit, but I received the album from Carolyn Hyde on her third trip to California that she didn't understand why she was here and praying the pray California for the elections. The elections were abysmal, terrible. But I kept praying for rain and I've got just a drizzle. That's not it. The farmers can't be blessed, which I've been praying for. And then another, and then four atmospheric rivers that are still filling the groundwater, the reservoirs, like it hasn't seen. Okay. The testimony is God did that. But in California, oh yeah, that's happening. Oh well. Okay. The people of God have to tell this is what's happened. We have to be bold in declaring it because God has done this. The state of California couldn't do that. What needs to happen in Israel? The people of Israel can't do that. God can do that through his Holy Spirit. And so that, Lord, may we, your people, who know you through your only begotten son, declare with boldness that this is the time, this is the day, you are bringing it, the living water that fills us, that gives us life. Without which, we, like the apostles that said i'll die for you when 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 saying where, where peter and, and all the rest denied him even though they he'd already they'd already been said love one another as, as i've loved you love one another no without the holy spirit we cannot do that we cannot obey the lord and that we may show that love that the world can't see and that's the message because that's by that we will be known as his disciples praise be the lord in jesus name amen Amen. Thank you, Blair. Go ahead, Debbie, and then we're going to turn it back over to uh, Josie. Uh, Matthew 19, 14, but Yeshua said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Father, I lift up the children that went out on Shabbat and uh, the other night. Father, I thank you, Lord, that their parents didn't hinder them, that they took them with them, that they handed out candy, that I can be hearts to the people around them. And Father, what a, what a teaching tool that they were able to be there and they were able to see the boldness of their parents. And Father, we pray that as they continue to grow, as they continue uh, to grow in you, that God, their hearts will be in a place that they will not fear talking to people, that they will have a boldness that has come because they, they went out and they saw. And Father, we thank you that... Um, 
Lord, I, I saw them when they came back in. None of them were afraid. They didn't shrink back. They just continued smiling and, and handing out the candy. So, Father, we just pray a blessing over them. We pray, Father, that more and more children would be raised up, Lord God, to be the evangelists, to be the ones that would go out and, and take the message, Lord God. Father, we just thank you. And, and Lord, we pray for the um, religious people. Uh, Father, those that uh, from Yeshua's day onward has been trying to stop the message from going forth. And yet, Lord God, you will not allow it to be stopped. Um, and Father, we know from One for Israel and all the other different um, testimonies that we hear, even everyone here in Israel, Lord God, it has not stopped. And there are many religious people that uh, whose eyes were open and that they have come to know Yeshua as their Messiah. So, Father, we continue to pray for them too in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Debbie. All right. Um, uh, Josie, we'll go, go back to you for uh, some final comments. Okay. Now, what, what time are we? Are we 10 2 or 5 2? No, in, we're in, we're actually we're actually we've got a little bit more time than I thought, but I uh, but you may have yeah. more to say, and we may have some a couple of other things that we that we want to pray on. Yeah. So better to have more time than not enough. I agree, <laughs> always. A um, few things that I'd like to say, uh, but also before we wrap it up, uh, I want us to pray for Chaya Mizrahi. I don't know if most of you know what's happened yep. with her. She's um, yeah, you know. Go, go ahead and no, go ahead and just go ahead and just say briefly wh why we need to pray. Yeah, just very briefly for those that don't know, uh, she has had a lot of spinal issues for quite some time, I think. And I know that they went traveling down to uh, the South Pacific not so long ago, and she was in a wheelchair, and her pain really uh, increased. It escalated and was inflamed. And then they came back, and just this week she had a spinal surgery, which hasn't so far been very successful. It's very, you know, um, kind of serious. So uh, many in the body, of course, here in Israel are praying for her. So before we finish, uh, I'd like to um, pray corporately on this group for her. Uh, and just to go back to what uh, Bev was saying about the evangelism and being bold. I think others have been praying it as well. Please keep praying this in your private prayer time or your own prayer groups outside of this global watch. You know, I was thinking about Peter's sermon and let's let's pray <laughs> for an anointing like Peter. I mean, he was really bold. I mean, really it was in the face of persecution, but nonetheless, he stood his ground and I often go back and read his sermon and like, I, I love it. I mean, it's just the pure gospel that we all know. And yet within it, it is so pure and simple. Truth, so simple, but he just stood there and he said it. And it said that they were, many were cut to the heart. So the word of God cuts in, it does cut in. And the other word that I linked with that, Bev, was, uh, it says, my word is like a fire, um, like a hammer that smashes the rock into pieces. And so as we pray the word out for um, the Jewish people, that it would smash their rocky hearts, break them open, and the water will flow from their hearts as the Lord moves upon them. And because we've got a few minutes and because I don't really want to take up all this time, but I'm feeling prompted by the Holy Spirit to, to, to tell you this testimony, which will take me about three minutes, primarily because I want to encourage you to be bold and to move with what you truly know God has given you for somebody, no matter who it is, even if they're scary. <laughs> My neighbor's not scary. Anyway, I, I, uh, two months ago, uh, we had new neighbors moving in. They had not moved in yet, but they were coming and going doing renovations. And I met them and we introduced ourselves. And the second time I met them, um, as they were coming and going doing their renovations, they invited us to come up to their apartment. We didn't invite them. They invited us. They hadn't even moved into our building yet up into where they were living, and we're like, oh, we'd love to come. You know, I'm thinking right away, well, it's a good opportunity. So
So we went to their um, old apartment and we had a, a, a lovely night and I thought I'd just be, you know, we'll just have fun and get to know them, have coffee. And I said, if there's a moment, I'll go in. So something came up and I, I see the very smart guy. He used to work at um, Raphael. He's retired now, you know, where they make the anti, detect the missiles, you know, the Iron Dome. And very smart, very intellectual, okay? And and so I, something came up and I said, oh, it's, a, it's about God. He said, I don't believe in God. I said, oh, I said, well, what do you believe in? He said, I believe in something out there. And I said a few more things and I left it. I wasn't, it was a time to get to know them and make, lay a foundation. So after that, you know, they moved in. I knew they moved in and I wanted to go up with a gift that was coming up with the Moedim, but just never got around to doing it and whatever. Anyway, uh, the week, the two days before Yom Kippur, get this, we meet in the garage. We have a communal parking, of course, in a, a apartment block, as you probably know, in America. And here we all drive in together, and I hadn't, I hadn't seen them for weeks. And they say, oh, you must come up to our home on the end of your, <laughs> no, it was actually, it was the day before Yom Kippur, come up on the Shabbat. So we went up, and um, anyway, sorry, I missed the, the main part. After the meeting in their old home, I came back that night and I had a dream. And in the dream was Nisim, this man, my neighbor, and in the dream, God said to me to tell him, one day you're going to need a lawyer. And that was the end of the dream. And I knew when I woke up, this was for Nisim. I had a message to go to him and tell him that one day he's going to need a lawyer. And here, a few months later, we meet in our parking and they ask us to come up just before Yom Kippur. And I'm thinking, okay, this kind of fits because a, a lawyer is like... Um, the priest that goes before Yeshua is in a, a lawyer. He goes before the God on behalf of all of us to plead our case <laughs> like a lawyer. So uh, we went up there and I said to God, well, you'll have to give me an opening if you want me to tell him this dream. So of course, an opening came up about halfway through the night. Uh, we're having a good time. And he said to me, uh, is there a synagogue around this neighborhood? And I said, oh, yeah, I told him where the synagogue was. But I, and I said, but Nisim, I thought you, uh, you don't believe in God. He said, oh, I believe in tradition. I said, oh, okay. I said, but if you have tradition, you have to have, you have to believe in a God and a faith to have tradition, to believe in tradition. Anyway, we, uh, we continued the con conversation. And I said to him, I've got something very interesting to tell you. I said, I had a dream about you. God gave me a dream about you. And I told him the dream. And I said, uh, one day you're going to need a lawyer. And he's like, his mouth is completely open. He said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I said, oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> and I, this is right before Yom Kippur. I said, look, you're going to go to the synagogue on Yom Kippur. What are you going to the synagogue? on? We had a whole conversation about Yom Kippur. And I went straight in. I gave him the whole gospel from Yom Kippur, from a Jewish perspective of needing a Kohen Hagadol. I talked about Aaron, the high priest, having to go in with blood. We talked about blood. Gave him the whole gospel message just from Yom Kippur. He was stunned. His wife was even more stunned. She was like on the floor. But that it was like, you know, I just did it and. And other my friends were saying, oh, I don't know if you could go in and say that or this or that. Or, but I felt the boldness of the Holy Spirit. So I wanted to share that with you to encourage you. Don't remain silent. And of course, they want us to come back. I said, no, you're coming to us next time and we'll carry on. But I've opened a door where I can go in now and I can just continue. And I'm believing for his salvation. His name is Nisim. Please Please continue to pray for him. I really believe God has got him marked and targeted. Uh, and then his wife will probably come, come in afterwards because she had been brought up completely nothing. Anyway, they're a gorgeous couple. We love them. And uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know what time are we? Yeah, a few more minutes. Shall we pray for Chaya? Yes, <clears throat> let's pray for yeah. Chaya. Um, I think Susan Rao... Yeah. Why don't you lead us in praying for her? And you had a comment that you wanted to make, and then we can um, we can 
close it off. But I, Josie, I'm just telling you that your 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 favor with God on this is very timely. It's not just about you, but I think I believe that God is opening up doors to speak to the uh, to to the Jews in Israel. Uh, and, and that there's going to be greater favor in that. And we, we can talk about that later, but I, I just, I have a, almost a chill going down my spine as you're, as you are talking about this experience that you had. And I think mm -hmm. that we need to, it, it is the Lord who gives us boldness. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when he's in charge, we don't have to worry about whether, what we're going to say or whether we're going to be bold or not. So Susan, go, go ahead and, um, uh, and pray for Chaya. And I think you had a comment that you wanted to make as well. And then we'll close off. Well, I, I just, uh, all through this thing, I've been trying to figure out what, Lord, are you driving at? And Josie, you have no idea how front and running your your testimony is right now. But what I, why that song touched me so much and why we're going to welcome the King of Glory is that we're hearing the sound of Israel rising up, up desiring Jesus wanting him to come in Amen. Amen. and uh father i thank you that you, you uh are even with kaya's situation we welcome your holy spirit to come into her body to stay to release the anointing of yeshua upon her i thank you father that you are the god that heals us and she believes in you with all her heart and father as you heal her you will begin to heal the backbone of israel and bring them into alignment with the head which you are jesus and i thank you for the boldness that is coming upon believers in the land because the hour is now for your word to go forth it will cut people to the to the bone to the heart it will transform their lives because the power of you, of god is in your word and i thank you for josie's example of breaking the death cycles breaking the fear cycles breaking the intimidation and being bold with your word and we call nasim back into uh into his um, inheritance in jesus in the full inheritance he and his wife in jesus name and the testimony of jesus is just going to prosper from this in jesus name amen amen so good all right um wow what uh even with a lot of time there's never enough time <laughs> josie is there some yeah. last final word you want to say and then we'll and then maybe we could have uh bev will you close us off in prayer but go go ahead josie if there's some last comment you want to make yeah michael just put on the uh on the chat nasim means miracles it does it means miracles ness is miracle and nasim is the plural so he i think nasim up right above me right right above here <laughs> your prayers are going straight through <laughs> Uh, he's in for a double portion of miracles. Yeah. Amen. 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 Awesome. Keep us posted, right, Bev. Josie. Keep us Absolutely. posted on the sure on the signal yeah. groups. Yeah. yeah. Cool Bev, friendship go, and, uh, go ahead and uh, and pray us out of here. Okay, I'm going to pray out with Isaiah 44. Yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you, fear not. O Jacob, my servant, and you, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. And Peter said, Josie, in that Shavuot day to those 3,000 who came, this is for you and your children. That promise of the spirit of the father was first for the children of Israel, for the children and descendants of Jacob. And so, Father, this is your good word. And we as Gentiles were just graciously, miraculously brought in to the commonwealth of Israel. And we have received the fullness of Yeshua, grace upon grace. Bring Nisam and his wife in. We ask by your word, now pour out your spirit 
on the descendant of Jacob, Nisam, and his wife, and bring them to the springs of living water, Yeshua, their Messiah. Bless all who are on this call. Remind us, O oh God, to hold up the believers in the land and all of us to have the boldness to speak forth the good news of Yeshua, our Messiah and King, King of Israel, King of the whole earth. We bless you, our Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for what you have done in our lives. We will never get over your mercy and grace to us for sending your Son and you, Yeshua, for coming and for being persecuted but for living forevermore. We bless your name, O oh God. Amen and amen. And all God's people said, amen. Everybody on YouTube, amen to each other. Amen. Amen. Bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 I love you. I love you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.